give us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Read Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us? Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us? Then would the raging waters have gone right over us? Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Jacob's family stays in Egypt to escape the famine in Canaan. They fall into oppression, but God raises up Moses to save them. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and, in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, and the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites, and made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick. They did every kind of fuel labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Hua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a, if it is a girl, she shall live. The midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all of his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. 
and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with uh, bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed him among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, Canticle 14. O Lord and ruler of the house of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. And yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. God equips his people for the good of the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul exhorts the church in Rome and us today to offer our gifts freely, just as we freely have received them. This is a reading from Romans. I appeal, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, And individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, 
He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit reveals to Peter that Jesus is the Son of God. This truth is the foundation and the root of the church. A reading from the book of Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we have turning points this morning. Turning points in um, our um, Old Testament reading for sure and our um, our um, gospel reading, and and also Paul uh, writes in Romans about the gifts of the Spirit, and so that's a turning point as well. I think um, that we're shifting gears from the old way of doing things to the new way, and Paul points out, gives us a signpost of what's to come in the church as we move forward. Um, so you can just see the Old Testament shifting and changing now. Um, um, the people were in Egypt, the Joseph saga, make sure that, that we know that they have settled now in Egypt, still waiting for their promised land, still a part of a covenant um, that was made with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and then Joseph. And so now uh, they are enslaved in uh, Egypt. They have become too numerous by, um, and too strong in power. And uh, if you remember all the Old Testament movies of, of the uh, Exodus from across the Red Sea, you'll remember that they were having to make bricks and of course that's in the scripture story too making bricks but and so their prophet and the one who is to lead them out of Egypt is born and so we hear the story of his birth and what happens to him after he's born and of course there was an edict or a decree that 
all firstborn and all Hebrew male babies should not be allowed to live at birth. So we have these two women who are considered holy women of the church, Shifra and Pua, and I will never forget them because in my Old Testament class where we had a quiz, it wasn't a pop quiz, we knew we were going to have a, a multiple choice quiz every darn uh, Friday along, along with also a quiz in Hebrew. So anyway, it was always multiple choice and you would always think that would be so simple and the scripture would be very plain and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so I remember that this was one of the multiple choice questions. Who were the midwives that saved the Hebrew babies? And well, of course the answer was Shifra and Pua, but did I remember that? No, I didn't. So I got that one wrong. But so, but I've never forgotten them since. And I'm pleased to see that in our, um, even in our church today, they are honored as holy women because they refuse to answer to Hebrew, I mean to uh, Pharaoh and saved the Hebrew, Hebrew babies. And so we have a story of Moses, and that's a story that is so familiar to all of us. Uh, we know that um, that story so well, and it's one that if you ever were a Sunday school teacher um, or ever you know were responsible for Christian ed, you would remember this story for sure because it's so easy to find little baby dolls to put in a basket and teach children about Moses in the basket. No one knows at this point that Moses will set his people free, will bring them out of Egypt and through the wilderness and to uh, right to the edge of the promised land. So it's a major turning point when Moses enters the story. We're not just talking about the patriarchs now, we are talking about these Hebrew people who are so downtrodden. And so then we come to our gospel and it is a major turning point, too, because it is the first time that it's really spoken and spelled out that somebody has recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, remember, he has stilled the storm, which was a major miracle. He has um, walked on water which is another major miracle. I mean, intervention really in our closed earth system. I mean, we kind of think that uh, nature's gonna set her course and we're gonna follow nature's course and um, there'll be storms and there'll be um, uh, nature events, but we don't really ever stop to think that God might reach into our system and that Jesus, who was God's son, might be able to intervene in nature as she sets her course. So it is huge that Jesus is shown walking on water and stilling the storm. And the disciples are finally beginning to say, Hmm, I wonder about this man. He's a little different. He's able to do things, amazing things, and heal people, and change things, and, um, and intervene in ways that normal people just are not able to do. And so um, uh, when Jesus asks Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter so quick always and impulsive and ready to jump in. But Peter names Jesus as the Messiah. So it is a major shift in the story. They are beginning their march towards Jerusalem. And this is really a two-part gospel, I think. You know, you re we read this half of it this Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll read the rest of it where Jesus begins to really spell out what's happening um, or what's going to happen, that he is going to be put on the cross and killed. And, um, and Peter is shocked. It's like, oh, no, 
no, no, no, no. You can't, well, so we got to protect you and you can't be going to Jerusalem and this isn't going to, um, you know, I don't know what you're thinking, Jesus, but it didn't, we, don't, we aren't going to let that happen. And of course, Jesus brings him up sharp uh, and tells him to get behind him and calls him Satan. So we go from this particular uh, section of this story where uh, Jesus names Peter as the rock and the cornerstone of the church will be built upon you, Peter, because of your faith. And I want you to think a minute about Peter and about what a ditz he is and was because he really was ditzy. I mean, he rushed out there and, you know, during the transfiguration, he, he said, okay, I know what, we'll build some houses here and, and Elijah and, um, um, and, um, um, uh, the prophets said, well, we, they can live in the houses and, and we'll get this all fixed. And, and he also promises all the time to do stuff that, you know, he really can't quite manage and can't quite do. And he's always, um, you know, rushing out of the boat to walk on water and all these kinds of things. So it's amazing that Peter is named as the rock upon whom the church will be built. And it's good news for us because we are a ditzy Jew in our own way. Now, not all of us and not all the time. Well, some of us are some of the time and maybe all of us are a teeny bit of the time. But anyway, it doesn't, your, your entry into the kingdom, your relationship with Jesus does not depend on your perfect behavior or even on your gifts. It depends on your faith and your ability to love the Lord. And that's who Peter was above all else. His ability to love and trust Jesus and to go with him no matter what. Until, you know, down the road a little bit, he's going to deny Jesus three times, which will break his heart, absolutely break his heart. And still he is forgiven for what he does and what he says. So we can take tremendous heart from Peter. I don't know about you, but I can relate to Peter so much better than I can to Paul. And I'm probably more like Paul than, well, I'm a lot like Peter too when you get right down to it. But Peter is so human and so lovely in his mistakes. Um, Paul can be a bit of a stiff backed um, um, preacher and um, um, busy telling everybody what they can do and what they can't do and, and what's sinful. But Peter is out there sinning just like all the rest of us and, and is loved and forgiven and cherished. So I think that the, the crux of this story is that the church is built on people who are not perfect and who do their best, but you know, are far, far from having it all put together. And so that's, a, that's something that we need to hold to our hearts and remember and know, especially in those times where we make mistakes and, and do things that we wish we didn't, wouldn't do. The other thing that I think is so important in here is the fact that P Peter recognized Jesus because he received revelation from God. He didn't get it through um, the acts of Jesus as much as he did through God's telling him that Jesus was his son and was the Messiah. And so I think we need to talk a little bit this morning about revelation and, and what that means and how that works. And I think it maybe works different ways in, in, within us because we have different gifts. Um, but I do think that God still breaks through into our closed system and still comes to us and gives us um, word uh, revelation and touches our lives and lets us know that he is there, lets us know that he is our Messiah, lets us know that he can touch our hearts even now 
and still, and that this is ongoing and still happening. So this week, think about uh, revelations that you get, um, ways of knowing things, and how those things come to you through prayer and through meditation, and sometimes through nature, and sometimes through other people. You know, God really does speak through other people. Uh, and there are people in our lives who uh, are angels for us, you know, that are, we're unaware that they're uh, the voice of God uh, sometimes, but we, we get it after a while and we, we know that we are receiving word from God on high. And think about times when you've gotten word about things that kind of came out of the blue or were so different from what you thought um, things should be and calls that God makes to you because he does call each and every one of us to be active within his church and to bring about his mission in the world as the church. This is what we do. Um, so I want you to think about those times when you, when you, you know, when God sp speaks to you or gives you a sign or tells you, go this way. I would like you to go this way. Um, and, and you can stay until the cows come home. No, I think I want to go that way. And God will just keep at it and keep at it. And say, no, I think for sure you want to go this way. And sometimes, you know, you get whacked over the head by a two by four. And, and then you really know you're supposed to go that way. Um, but anyway, God does intervene in our lives. And I want you to listen and to watch for that. We're in a very tough time right now. You know, I can't remember a time when things were this rocky everywhere. And um, so it's a time to really allow God to be a part of your life and enter into your life and, and help you, um, just guide you on this path to bring you through this time in our world and he will do that if you turn to him and listen listen closely he will do that for you now i'm not suggesting you go suggesting you go out with a, a messiah complex and say god told me you know have you known folks that are so sure that they're um on the path of god when you look at kind of what's going on and you think well i don't know for sure you are um i had a parishioner one time um, years ago that would, whenever she thought we ought to be doing something, uh, she would say, God has laid it on my heart that the ECW should do, um, you know, a country fair with 20 women. Well, anyway, um, y y you had to kind of say to yourself, now, wait a minute, is this God talking or is this, this woman talking? So you have to use your common sense. Um, but listen still, listen to God's call to you and what it is he is asking you to do. And if you follow that path, he'll be there with you. There's an old joke about Harry and Harry was trying to decide what to do and which path to follow and where God was calling him. And um, Harry would say, oh, God, let me know. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And God finally said, Harry, I don't care where you go. I just want you to know that wherever it is, I'll be with you all the way. Amen. Will you join me now in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. L have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust, trust in, you. in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never and hope in hoping. vain. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Therefore, let us come humbly before God, saying, Our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. Generous God, you have graciously given the members of your church diverse gifts. <clears throat> May we, who are many, function in this world as the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for Justin, Arch Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Gretchen, our bishop, and Beth and Joan, our priests. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Church Periodical Club. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. God of the nations, mysterious and unexpected are the instruments of your salvation. Give us eyes to see your work in the lives of the most humble servants and the grandest royalty. <clears throat> Bless all those who put their trust in you. We pray for Donald, our president, and our national and local governments. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. <clears throat> Great God, the maker of heaven and earth, bring forth fruits in due season. May all the people of the world experience the blessing of sun and rain and harvest. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Well, well with us. Caring God, give to the people of our region sober judgment. May each member of our community live in light of live in light of the great mercy you have shown us. We join the daughters of the King as we pray for Lois and Tat Menard, Richard Moore, Janice Munson, and Lisa Parker. <clears throat> our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. Lord God, be on the side of those in need of our prayers. May the sick and sorrowful not be overwhelmed, but instead find freedom in you. For those on our prayer list, we pray for Chris, Leo, Brandon, Emily, Rika, Robin, Helen, Heather, Pat, Carol, Annie, Doug, Barry, Carolyn, Brenda, Joan, Judy, Shirley, Mary Lynn, Jeff, Jan, Derek, Ruth, Bob, Marty, Nathan, Bob, Brian, Tim, Kathy, Margaret, Dwayne, Jeff, Dale, and Ed. Give them courage and hope in their distress and the strength to endure. We pray for social justice and the end to racism in our country. 
We pray for the protection of our police and all first responders. We pray for the protection of those who protest police brutality. We pray for those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. Almighty God, you have promised through your beloved Son that not even the gates of Hades will prevail against the people of your redeeming. May all of the dead find comfort in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for all those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Dwell well with us. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's time for birthday, anniversary, and travel prayers. Um, I do want to have special prayer this morning for Marty and for Chuck. Um, I talked to Chuck last night. He's hanging in. Um, Marty is somewhat better. Um, there has been an, she's moving around a lot more. She um, uh, recognized Teresa, so she's awake enough to know that Teresa was next to her, squeezed uh, Teresa's hand when, when she was there, and she's got more movement. So they're very encouraged. Um, uh, cautiously optimistic is the term. And she's got neurologists on board now. She has had a couple of little strokes, um, hopefully little. Um, there has not, there wasn't a change with the second stroke. So, um, um, it, you know, so it wasn't real uh, major. Um, but I want us to pray for Marty and, and um, Chuck this morning and for Teresa, her daughter. Uh, who is really uh, hanging in in um, uh, Seattle with her mom. Um, and I also want us to pray for Darren. Darren possibly has COVID. He's over the worst of it. If he does have it, he was tested, but he hasn't had the test back yet. Um, so he has not been well this past week, but is beginning to feel better. And um, so Laurel, I'm sure, is so grateful for that because she's been taking care of two babies um, all by herself this past week. So uh, let's pray for them. Anybody else we need to add to, for prayers, special prayers that aren't anniversary and travel and birthday? All right, let us pray. Gracious God, be present with Marty. Bring her health and healing and uh, no more strokes if that uh, is within your her uh, capability at this time. We ask that you be with her family, with Teresa, to give Teresa strength, and also with Chuck, her husband, as he stays home and gets this news um, over the phone instead of being able to be with Marty. So we ask that you bring healing to this whole family and watch over them. We pray also for Darren and for his family, that you may watch over them and bring health and healing to all of them too. And that um, if it is a, a situation with COVID, that you will protect the babies and Laurel from, um, from catching it. Amen. All right, birthdays. Who's got a birthday? Anybody? Well, you said that Walt's birthday was today. Walt, yes, Walt has a birthday. And uh, anybody else? Any, anybody else? Okay. Well, let's pray the birthday prayer for Walt. Oh, God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Walt as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, anniversaries. Anybody have anniversaries? Oh, I see Catherine waving and also Michelle. Um, so we'll pray for um, the uh, Culpeppers 
and um, the Alexanders. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? All right, let us pray. God of tenderness and strength, you have brought their paths together and led them into marriage. Continue with them now as they travel through good times, through trouble, or through change. Bless their home, their partings, and their meetings. Make them worthy of each other's best and tender with each other's dreams, trusting in your love, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, anybody traveling? Candy's traveling. Candy, you're going to, um, I forget, I forget where you're going. John and I are leaving Tuesday for Yellowstone. Yellowstone, that's right. Anybody else traveling? Where's Barb? Barb, are you raising your hand? We can't see you if you are. Uh, all right, and Michelle? And, we're, going, um, we're going back to SQUIM to keep working. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, you need special prayers for that, I know. Anybody else? All right. Um, so uh, we're praying for Broadfoots and um, Alexanders for travel. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness in us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up our, ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And the prayer of St. Chrysostom. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make your commun our communal, our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come everlasting life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. All right. Coffee hour is officially beginning with bring your own coffee and donut. Um, and I see we have Ginger with us this morning. Congratulations. You got on your iPad and uh, we can see you just as clear as day and are glad to have you with us. And welcome to Joan. We see her picture this morning. Um, and welcome to everybody else who's here. Um, just so glad to see everybody all together. And so what's going on? What's new? <laughs> well, don't everybody... Not much. <laughs> No, everybody speak oh. at once. Unmute yourselves and so I want to know where I want to know where Catherine Culpepper is. I see her. I think it's Catherine. Yeah, with moons and stars behind her. She's in outer space. I'm in outer space. No, I have a I have a virtual background, and uh, this happens to be one. <laughs> The one that drives you crazy is the ocean, because it, the waves come all the time behind you. Uh, I'd like to be at the ocean, but it drives you crazy. Well, at first you were in the papyrus weeds. Yes. So you could have gotten Moses out of the Nile. If I had realized it was Moses, I would have left myself in the weeds. Uh. And speaking of Moses, yeah. when I was growing up, um, you know, and we were